Well, the weathermen were right for once. 50% <laughs> chance of snow turned into 100% chance of snow. Visibility's down to probably, I don't know, less than a quarter mile, I would say. And uh, the snow is, I would say, close to a foot deep with five to six inches of fresh snow right on top. And we're going in. We're all chained up. It's a sheet of ice underneath, but we seem to be creeping in okay. We'll catch back up with it once we get in. Well, this time we didn't make it all the way in. So we made it kind of to the driveway of the next property over. Went and grabbed the quad and the sled. We loaded up the uh, gear that we were bringing in. Brought in some cement board and some metal roofing material. And I'll show you what's next on the project list. pieces of galvanized metal roofing. Well, the snow's really coming down out there. It's funny, the weather didn't forecast snow for the past week and a half or so, and they said 50% chance today. It's snowing like crazy, and there's already almost a foot of snow on the ground. You can see our sleigh tracks. Beautiful. Well, get to work. Well, we got a fire going in the wood stove and it's actually putting out some heat, which is great. But I, uh, we're here to do a uh, very specific thing today. And thanks to uh, two of my subscribers, uh, John Parker and E.R. Morgan, they urged me not to burn this wood stove overnight or to burn it hot without a heat shield on the inside here. So um, thank you guys very much for your concern and your suggestion. So... What we've decided to do is to back um, the paneling here with some cement board and then to use um, some galvanized metal roofing um, to act as a heat shield. And there's about an inch standoff and we're gonna raise it up a little higher on the bottom to create kind of a radiator effect. So there'll be some convection, air convection coming up from the bottom and flowing between the uh, metal roofing material and um, the cement board. There should be no fear of any contact with combustible material. So um, that's the project we're working on today. We're also gonna trim out the windows, try to clean this place up a little bit and uh, move some of this gear back down to the tool shed at the uh, base camp. So uh, we'll take you along the way. Well, we got a pretty hot fire going on this thing. It's burning like crazy and um, this thing's lined with fire brick, and it's take, it takes a bit of time to get the stove up to temperature before it starts really radiating any heat. But um, as you'd expect, all of our water is frozen, <laughs> frozen solid. I'd like to make some coffee if possible. So here's my little multi-purpose heat shield. Try to melt some water with this thing, or melt some ice. Well, we have one of the two pieces of the heat shield installed. I wanna show you how we installed it. We took the piece of Duroc cement board and we screwed it to the paneling of the wall. And then we took this piece of galvanized metal roofing. We cut it in half. It was originally three by eight. So this is three by four now. And we turned it upside down. On the metal roof itself, the ridges would be up. But we wanted to make sure that we had some airspace between the Duroc cement board and the, the heat shield, we'll call it. And so 
this airspace right here is probably close to an inch. I mean, I don't have a tape measure on me, but it's probably three quarters of an inch. And what we did is we raised the shield system off the ground by two and a half inches or so. And that's going to allow for a convective process to take place. Air is going to flow from the bottom through these this air chamber right up the top. And it's going to circulate through much like a forced hot water baseboard would at your house. And I feel that this is going to provide more than adequate protection from uh, this stove being in too close quarters to combustible material. Admittedly, the smokestack is pretty darn warm down here. Um, it gets considerably cooler as we go up. By the time we reach this 90 here, it's totally touchable. We get to this coupler. This is actually room temperature, I would say, well, probably 60-something degrees, 70-something degrees. Here, this double insulated pipe that's going through the outside wall is actually cool. It's um, a little more than cool, almost cold. This piece of sheet metal here is actually cold. It's very cold. And that's because this is the outline. This is an uninsulated box that we cut into the wall. And so all that cold air from the outside is uh, trapped inside of here because there's no insulation. We have, you may remember from a previous video, we have um, a similar installation on the outside wall. So I, I feel that um, given the advice of you guys and um, you know the first-hand inspection of the system that it's going to be very very safe. As always I do welcome the feedback. Um, I'm not a guy that's installed a hundred wood stoves so for, for those of you that may have had more experience than me I'd really appreciate your feedback. Alright it's not because I actually want coffee but more the novelty to see if I can actually cook something in this cabin um, since the wood stove has been putting out some heat. So we start with a couple of blocks of ice and uh, we'll see if we can actually turn that into coffee. I got a couple French presses up here. I think it'd be kind of nice to um, at least be able to go home saying that we cooked something up here. So I'll let you know. Alright, the next project is to trim these windows out. We've already got the lengths of the trim cut and we've got them scribed and marked so we know what our waste pieces are. Um, we're just trying to clean up a little bit around the cabin here. Uh, we folded up the big chop saw and uh, tried to just tidy up just a little bit. I know it doesn't look like it. Um, we're going to get this all trimmed out. we got the window ledges already installed. We opted to go for a full six inch window ledge. I don't know, if you're anything like me, you like to come in and empty your pockets, your everyday carry, and just throw it down somewhere. And I can't think of a better place than a window ledge. So, um, yeah, we're going to finish this off and uh, we'll show you when it's done. Alright, it's almost time to make the coffee. I guess we'll unbox my new Aero Latte Cafetiere French Press here. I uh, have been using a French press now for probably four or five years and I have one at home and it's the simplest yet best coffee you'll ever have or I'll ever have anyways. Um, I got this for Christmas. One of the few things I actually wanted for Christmas. And uh, look, it comes with some instructions. Oh, pull those out. And it comes with a little measuring spoon as well, which is good because all my silverware is down in the, in the tool shed. So uh, I think it's time to fill this thing up with some coffee because our water is just about boiled, if you can believe it. It went from ice to boiling, and I think it only took a couple hours. <laughs> Well, uh, next thing you know, we'll be drinking coffee.
That, my friends, is the easiest way to make coffee with no power. Well, this is the end of a very successful trip up to the cabin here. We got a lot of stuff done. We got the heat shield installed, which we showed you a little earlier. Um, and, you know, the stove is dying out now because we haven't really been feeding it too much. But there's really very little um, temperature. It's cool to the touch. And I attribute that to the airflow behind um, or through these channels here on the galvanized uh, metal roofing. So that's all taken care of. We were able to um, get accomplished the trim on all of the windows. There are only four windows in the cabin, but we trimmed them out. And, uh, you know, admittedly, we cut a few corners, but uh, I think it came out pretty nice. It's unbelievable how much water is uh, condensing in this wood here. I mean, the heat from the stove has just drawn out so much moisture. And the moisture content in the air is condensing um, and then freezing on the windows all over the place. It's it's really, uh, it's noticeable. Um, you know, we came in here and there was a little bit of frost on the windows and after we heated the place up, the frost level, I mean, it's just so much. See, so much of it. But uh, we really need to dry this place out. And the only way that's gonna happen is um, under prolonged exposure to heat. There's another one of the windows. Back window here. I certainly can't say that this is some of my best mill work, but <laughs> it's rough lumber in a camp following the 80% rule. The other back window under the loft here. This is kind of a cool little spot back here. It's neat. And another thing that we uh, just threw together was this little makeshift table. Um, it's really nothing too exciting. It's some rough sawn 2x8s and rough sawn 2x6s. And then we just whip together some legs. And uh, my opinion, it looks more like a shooting table than a prep table of any kind. But, hey, whatever. It's going to be our little makeshift kitchen for now, at least get us through the winter. And uh, remember, this cabin here was uh, was my answer to... Um, staying in a motel throughout the winter coming up here so um, I envision after the, the the big cabin is built in the spring this will probably be like a guest cabin or a place for the kids to hang out um, overall very successful trip very happy with what we've gotten done last time um, we hung the lantern on this little pulley system here so it can be raised and lowered and uh, that works out pretty well. The only thing left to do now is bring the generator in, lock this place up, and it's negative 20 degrees out right now. It's one of the coldest days um, of the year. And uh, it's probably about, I don't know, 40 in here, maybe a little lower, I don't know. Somewhere around there. I don't know if you can hear that wind on the outside howling. Open up the door and see if we can hear it. Oh, well, that's another thing we need to do. Is we really need to weather seal the uh, the door. Now you can't see anything through the camera, but you certainly can feel it. You can probably see some stars, though. No, oh, maybe not through the camera. All right. Well, sorry for all that black black space, but anyways, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, we'd appreciate a thumbs up. That's what tells us whether. You enjoy the content that we're making if you have any suggestions or feedback as always i really appreciate the comments and the suggestions after all it was because of the suggestion of two subscribers that we built this heat shield here and uh thanks for your uh concern and concern enough to speak up now it's done it looks good it's functioning well before we leave the only thing we need to do is move that cordwood out of the way until next time, see you in the next bit. Well, you can't see how cold it is, but I can certainly tell you how cold it is. It's frigid. There's a pretty crazy wind right now, and it's snowing. I don't know if you can see it or not.
and the headlamps. Rob's got the sled down there filled with stuff that's going back, tools, ladders, miscellaneous stuff that's going back to the tool shed down below. Whoa! I almost fell. Well, that's because I'm clumsy. Hey, there's a tractor sitting exactly where it was the day we tried to bring the wood stove up and we couldn't get it any further. See how much snow we got? Well, we're on our way out. See you next video.